greatest moments in your life and, 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 and a moment that you uh, still remember and, and, and can tell us day, um, um, minute, hour, uh, <laughs> was the day you met this beautiful young lady sitting yeah. next to yeah, you, that's, that's your wife, uh, Sheena. Yes. Uh, now, Sheena is a great uh, cartoon hero uh, for many people, but uh, she became your hero. Tell us a little bit about how you met uh, Sheena and how God blessed you uh, uh, with this uh, companionship in ministry. You want her to answer? Okay, well, Sheena, I'll let, 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 no, no. no, I want you to, because you, 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 you know the day and the hour, and, okay, okay. and it wasn't the same day for her. I'm going to ask her what that day was for her, but tell us about what it was for you. Okay, uh, uh, for me, um, I uh, was sort of an, a, a pastor w that hadn't really got involved with a relationship. And I remember praying that the Lord would, would send me someone. I had, uh, I dated around, mm -hmm. but uh, it was more me choosing rather mm -hmm. than the Lord choosing. And it wasn't until uh, seven years later that I actually got to the place where I surrendered my dating life to God honestly. And I remember I was in my um, uh, dorm room and I, I was praying because my mother was dying of cancer. And so I, I began to intercede on her behalf and just plead with her, and this is in the wee hours of, of the morning, and the, the thought came to me, the Lord impressed me, now I want you to pray for a, a wife. Uh, pray for my choice for you. And, and I remember praying, and I said, Lord, uh, I, I want you to have complete control over this area in my life. You have control over many areas, but this area, I have not given you 100%. And so as I was praying, the Lord said, okay, now go to the Bible. I went to the Bible, he said, turn to Proverbs 31, and mm -hmm. I began to read the list of the qualities of this, this virtuous woman, and, uh, and he said, is this what you, you want, is this, is, do you agree that this is best for you? Because this is what I want for you. And I said, Lord, yes, this is what I, what I desire. And he says, okay, are you willing to wait for it? I said, Lord, I don't care, I'll wait another seven years. If it takes that long, find me this woman, where is she? Okay. Now, I was on the fourth floor of Berman Hall. I was the head RA, so I could see the entire campus. And that morning, it was early uh, Saturday morning, there was a, a early morning prayer program going on. And as I began to disagree, and I even told the Lord, I said, I, I don't care where she is, I don't care how long, and I almost said that, that I didn't care what she looked like. But, but I said, as long as she's in the ballpark, oh Lord, <laughs> it doesn't matter. And uh, when I got up off of my knees, uh, Pastor, uh, I looked out of my window, and there coming toward Berman Hall, Berman Hall was Sheena. And when I saw her, it hit me like a ton of bricks, and I knew that the Lord had showed me. Now, I had met her before. I had even tried to date her, and she would kind of brush me off. So I knew that the Lord would have to fix this thing if, if, if it were to uh, you know, be a success. But, but he did, and, and, um, and to make a long story short, I, we went to the meeting. She sat on one side, I sat on the other side. He didn't the, talk to me. He avoided me. I think he was in shock. I was in shock, <laughs> yeah, because it was the Lord said, okay, now single life is over. You know, okay. so I, was, I was coming to grips with that. But yet I knew that God had heard my prayer. Um, uh, and then I began to uh, walk towards the church because Pioneer Memorial, uh, their service, services began at, at 10, 11 a.m., and so as I'm walking past the student center, past the cafeteria, you'd have to make a right, and you have to walk past the girl's dorm, because she had already left and gone back after the program had ended. And as I'm walking towards the Pioneer Memorial Church, Sheena now comes out of her dorm room, and uh, we meet head on in an intersection. And so the Lord said, okay, here's the way I want you to date. And so I asked her, I said, Sheena, would you like to come to church with me? And, uh, and that was the beginning. And when I uh, entered into the church, we sat down. The pastor, Dwight Nelson, began to talk about how he met his wife walking. His sermon was entitled, Can Two Walk Together Except They Be Agreed? And I'm just sitting there with my mouth wide open because I know, knew that God had, had answered prayer. And he had orchestrated everything, the movements, the, you know, the timing, everything was, was right on time. And it happened within minutes, not, not years, not days, not months, but within minutes the Lord answered prayer. And, 
And he's just, a, he's just a wonderful God. He knows what we need. And he can do exceeding and abundant above all we could ask or think. Sheena, how long did it take you to know? How long did it take you to know that he was the one for you? Did you know that same day? Um, before that, I actually, actually months before that, he had invited me to prayer meeting at Cosopolis. I asked him, where was that? He said, oh, it's um, down in the country, a couple of miles. I said, oh, you know, I have a class, and I did. And I was glad I have a class. I cannot go to prayer meeting. So that was his first attempt. After that, we um, went out as a group. And whilst I was in that group, before this time, I started hearing him, you know, talking, and I started to like him, you know. So before that point, God had already opened up my heart to say, you know, this is a possibility. Tell us a little bit, and we're really uh, very short on time, but Sheena, tell us a little bit of how, uh, where you came from. You, 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 you're not from the United States. Where are you from? I'm from England, Northampton, England. My parents are actually from Jamaica. Okay. They went to England in the 50s, so I was born in England along with um, four sisters. Uh -huh. So we came over to the mainland in 1982. And you studied and did undergraduate work uh, to uh, obtain a degree in? In edu elementary education. So you're an educator, and, um, mm -hmm. and now you're at the university there where you met, and you were getting a, a master's degree. Yes. And your master's degree was in? Curriculum and instruction. Curriculum and instruction. So now we have a preacher, and we have a teacher who have come together. Yes. And Sheena, um, how have you been able to help your husband in your ministry, in, in, in his ministry? And in the, actually, it's a joint ministry, isn't it? Yes. Well, the major way is we have these four boys. And so I was called by God to take care of these four boys, which is a task indeed. But the Lord has been good to me. And you have homeschooled them now, I understand. How long? Um, about nine years. About nine years. Yeah. So let me see if we can wrap this all together. Here we have two people from the opposite ends of the earth. One is in the depths of despair. One is totally in another country. And yet God not only takes you and lifts you up and gives you purpose in life, yeah. He also shows us that he is interested in our social life and in our dating. Mm -hmm. He hears your prayer for a life partner. Yes. And you told, her, you told him, God, anyone, at any time, not too ugly, <laughs> okay? You drew a line there. You know, somebody said, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life, you got to make an ugly woman your wife. But I'm glad that wasn't God who said that, aren't you? As a matter of fact, God says, I want the best for you, and he will only lead us to pretty people, right? <laughs> Indeed, even if those people come from another country, he will draw us together and give us a purpose, a plan, and a ministry whereby we are using the gifts he's given us to bless others' lives. You know, we could talk all day. Yeah. But you have demonstrated to us what Siana Lenny is trying to say again in this, this, this whole realm. And that is, if you want peace, if you want joy, if you want happiness, if you want praise, I don't want you to give people a laugh. I want you to give them Jesus. Yes. And so yes. right now, listen. As Sina Lenny once again says, you have a reason to praise, and that reason is, I give you Jesus. Tossing on the sea of strife, you need someone. If you feel so alone and your house is not alone, you need someone. 
If it seems life isn't fair And there's no one left to share All those days and nights When things just don't turn out right And you want someone to care And someone to just be there You need 